Well, good morning, and welcome back to another episode of the Gold Country Miner. It is a cold and rainy day here in the Gold Country, so I figured I'd take this opportunity to spend a little time down in the barn here and build a sluice box. So the sluice that I'm planning to build, it's going to be real basic. It's going to be a long wooden trough with some riffles going across it, and that's about it. None of the miner's moss or carpeting or anything like that. Just a wooden trough with riffles. Now in the spirit of the original 49ers, who had to be really resourceful and use whatever kind of materials they had around, I'm only going to use materials that I have at the house. So I've got uh, some kind of old shelf that I salvaged from a friend's burn pile. I've got some old plastic decking material. And then a couple of uh, used six-foot fence boards. So that's going to be the basis for my sluice box. As far as the dimensions go, I'm going to be shooting for about six feet long and uh, no wider than eight inches because I want it to be able to fit inside of my actual metal sluice box. That way I can kind of check to see how well it recovers the gold. Without further ado, let's get to work. My first step is going to be to knock this little edge piece off and then rip this down to width. Now I'm going to start cutting the material for the little riffles. I got to try to pick and choose out of this board and make sure I miss all the old screws and nails that are stuck in there. <laughs> so what I want to do next is mill these at that angle. That way, as the uh, water and gravel flow into the sluice box, it'll bounce up over that edge. But then on the back side, it'll create that little low pressure zone. So that's going to be the direction of flow over the riffle. And the next thing is for me to cut those, uh, those angles on there. Here's a tip for you. When you're cutting, you only want to have a little bit of the blade showing above the, the uh, level of your piece of uh, material. That way if something happens, if you have an accident, you cut off less of your hand. gravel will flow up this side and then that gold will curl under and settle in that low pressure zone on the back side of that. Now I just need to go split these in half over on the chop saw and then start uh, attaching them. Here's a tip for you. Set up a little stop block. That way you don't have to measure it every single time. Just press it up against that. <laughs> Cut it, move it on down. Ugh. 
this thing's coming together. Right now, I've just got it all dry fit. Everything is still loose. But I really like how it's turning out. And I like the way it looks. You know, it just looks like an old timer would be using it. You know, like packing it in on his donkey, on his mule, heading out to the diggings. Got his pick on his back, ready to go. Yeah, I can't wait to give this a test and see how it works. So this sluice is coming along real nice, but uh, I think I gotta take five, just have a little break. Break time. Oh yeah! Ah! Ah! step is to get all the riffles laid out and start attaching those. Okay, I'm spacing out the riffles every three inches. Okay, so we're putting a little bit of waterproof glue on the bottom side. Nice, thin, even coat. Go, get it covered real good. Okay. And then with this stuff, the other surface is supposed to be damp. So rub a little water on there. Like that. Stick it on down. Okay. And then pin it a couple nails. Three down, 17 to go. Here we go, final one. There it is. Done with the tedious part. And there's a look at the orientation of those riffles. Time to stick the sides on. The next step is to attach uh, these little supports on the top. That way the uh, sides don't bow out while I'm using it. Now the last thing I'm gonna include on this sluice are a couple of uh, side pieces that are hinged. That way I can uh, fold them out and help capture more water flow to, to divert through the box. Now you're probably saying to yourself, Hey Pete, that's pretty convenient that you just happen to have a couple of hinges laying around the house. But it's true. I did not go and buy these for this project. They were in my junk bucket. Like I said, I was going to only use materials I had. Here's the completed sluice. I've got the hinged flare outs there up top to help guide the water in and then six feet of riffles spaced every three inches. Now I left this top section open here. That's where I'm gonna be shoveling the gravel into, so I didn't put any riffles there. Now if you enjoyed this episode of the Gold Country Miner, make sure to stay tuned for my next one when we go and test this bad boy and see if it's any good at actually recovering gold. Also, go check out my channel and some of the other videos I've got posted. And remember, like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, thanks for watching.